Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In part one of this series, I showed how this drawing from NASA does not accurately represent temperatures during the first half of the 20th century. They show the 1920s and 1930s as being very cold. But the historical record shows that the Arctic was quite warm and glaciers around the world were melting very rapidly. The 1930s was also the warmest decade in the United States. Now I'm going to discuss how the temperature record has been corrupted by government agencies. This is a NASA graph showing the raw temperature data from the capital of Iceland. Thermometers show that the 1930s and 1940s were the warmest decades there. But NASA alters the data before they release it to the public. NASA is constantly fiddling with the data, and this graph is one of many versions they released which removed the warmth of the 1930s and 1940s. This is NASA's U.S. temperature graph from 1999. It showed 1934 as being the warmest year and cooling through the end of the 20th century. In this graph, 1998 was more than half a degree Celsius cooler than 1934. But NASA has since altered the data. Now they show a warming trend from 1934 through the end of the 20th century. 20 years ago they showed cooling, and now they show warming during the same time period. The data has been altered. The same thing has occurred with NASA's global temperature graphs. This is what it looked like in 2001, and this is what it looks like now. In 2001, they showed about half a degree Celsius warming from 1880 through the end of the 20th century, but now they show about double that. In the year 2000, NASA showed no net warming from the 1870s through the 1970s. And they showed 1878 as being the warmest year during that 100-year period. 1878 was likely the hottest year on record, and I'll be discussing that in part three of this series. But NASA has since altered the data. Now they show a strong warming trend during that same time period, and they've erased all of the data prior to 1880. Once again, they've created a warming trend which doesn't actually exist in the data, and they've hidden the hottest year on record in 1878. Now I'm going to show how NASA temperature graphs are not consistent with earlier work. This 1975 graph was published by the National Academy of Sciences. It showed no net warming from 1900 through the 1960s, and it showed a strong cooling trend from the 1940s through the 1960s. In 1976, National Geographic published a graph showing the same thing, no warming from 1880 through the 1970s. In 1974, the National Center for Atmospheric Research published a very similar graph. There was a strong cooling trend during the prior three decades. But NASA has since erased the post-1940 cooling trend. The black line is the 1974 NCAR graph, and the red line is the current NASA graph. The post-1940s cooling has simply been erased by NASA. Dr. James Hansen is the person from NASA who started the global warming scare before Congress in June of 1988. And in this 1999 paper, he lamented the fact that the world wasn't behaving as he predicted. He couldn't understand why the United States was cooling. It didn't match his theory. The United States data is extremely important because the vast majority of long-term high-quality data around the world is from the United States. This map shows where the U.S. government has daily temperature data from 1891 to 1920. They have almost no data from South America, Africa, most of Asia, Antarctica, or the Arctic. The U.S. data is critically important. And James Hansen took it upon himself to alter that data and turn the cooling trend into a warming trend. This graph showing warming in the United States since the 1930s is not an accurate representation of the climate in the United States. This is not how science is done. Now let's take a look at how the process became broken. James Hansen started calculating temperatures during the late 1970s as a way to compare them against his climate models. When his climate models started failing, he started changing the data to match the models, rather than the other way around, which is how science is supposed to be done. He put his reputation on the line before Congress in 1988. His predictions of warming were failing, so he altered the data to preserve his reputation. We got into a corrupt situation where the same people who were making the models were also in charge of the temperature record. 
There was no independence between the modelers and the people who were checking their work. They were the same people. This would be like having a sporting event where the head coach was also the referee, the scorekeeper, and the cheerleader. We would never put up with that in sports, and it's unfortunate that we have to put up with it in climate science. The climate modelers who are managing the temperature record have a fundamental conflict of interest. NASA cites as evidence for the graph that other agencies have come up with almost exactly the same graph. But none of those graphs even vaguely resemble prior research. And none of these graphs show the warmth of the 1920s and 1930s, which I discussed in the previous video. 100 years ago, high-quality thermometer data from most of Earth's surface was very poor. There's no way that these agencies could have come up with graphs so similar unless they were colluding on data and methodology. And that's exactly what they were doing, as we can see in this 2009 ClimateGate email. The top people at different agencies around the world were discussing by email how to get rid of the warmth of the 1940s. Tom Wigley at NCAR said to Phil Jones at the University of East Anglia in the UK, if we could reduce the ocean blip by, say, 0.15 degrees Celsius, then this would be significant for the global mean. But we'd still have to explain the land blip. It would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we are still left with why the blip. They made a decision to remove the warmth of the 1940s, and they didn't even have an explanation for why they were going to do it. Glaciers were rapidly disappearing during the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, but NASA and other government agencies have simply made that warmth disappear. Spitsbergen warmed 7 degrees Celsius during the 1920s and 1930s, and glaciers in Norway were rapidly disappearing during that same time. But NASA has made that warmth disappear and claimed that the 1920s and 1930s were among the coldest decades on record. By altering the data, they made the warmth in the Arctic during that time simply disappear. Having gotten away with it for decades, climate modelers have become very bold with their temperature fraud. And now the leading people brag in peer-reviewed research that they use their climate models to constrain the actual observational data. This is the exact opposite of how science is supposed to be done and is the fundamental problem with climate science. They should be adjusting the models to comply with the observed data, not the other way around. In his next video, Toto will be discussing the year 1878, which was likely the hottest year on record and which has been recently erased by NASA. Toto will release that soon. In the meantime, please visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.